Hi everybody. One of the things that I've been thinking about lately, things that have been going through my mind, are whether to live your life planned or spontaneous, and when one is appropriate and the other is more appropriate. Louis has been talking about this a bit in his vlogs because of the trip that they're going to do across from New York over to California and he mentioned that, you know, should you be doing things spontaneously or should we plan things out to the nth degree? And I think spontaneity doesn't come out of nothing. I think there's a vast bank of skills and ideas and information and knowledge that you've collected that can be a springboard for the spontaneous and creative things that you do. It's definitely very difficult not to be spontaneous when you're in a flow of creativity. But I don't think that that doesn't mean that there hasn't been a lot of planning and thinking about things and gathering knowledge that's happened beforehand. Anyway, I haven't done a really kind of deep study of this topic, so I thought I'd just talk about some of the things that I like doing spontaneously and some of the things I prefer to have planned. So for example, going on trips, I really prefer to do those spontaneously because I've found from experience that you can put something in the diary, book flights, book hotels, book whatever it is you need to book, and then something else crops up. So usually in the summer holidays, we um, don't book anything and we wait till like about a week beforehand <laughs> and then we go, okay, yeah, let's go now. And we um, stick the tent in the back of the car and we drive to the south of France. And that keeps everything really flexible. And if anything comes up in the meantime, we can kind of move things around a bit and it stays flexible. But there was one year, a very long time ago, it was when I was expecting Darcy, some friends of ours said, oh, we'd really like to come camping with you, but we have to know the dates we're going because we've got to put the time off work. So we thought, oh, okay, yeah, we'll definitely go at this time. Then we got a wedding invitation <laughs> during the time that we were supposed to be away from some very close friends and we couldn't change the date. So that was the first thing that happened. And then Louis won a design competition. He'd uh, turned his bedroom in our house into a jungle and he'd sent off some photographs for this competition and the BBC were very excited about it and came and filmed his room and he got through to the final three and he's done a video about it and then the three people that were in the final um, decorated a room in this brand new state and he won the overall competition and the prize was a design course in Nottingham and it was during the time that we were away <laughs> so that was tricky he was only 15, it was a two week course that he won. He went off on the first week and I met him coming off the train and then he was at home for the weekend and then he went off for the second week and then we went to the south of France. And we made a nice arrangement with his cousin and Hilary and a friend of Hilary's and the four of them as teenagers were coming down to the south of France on the train and that was going to be an adventure. The first thing that went wrong was when he arrived back from Nottingham, the week had been spent doing a big massive canvas the size of a mural and he left it on the train. So I wasn't there at the train to meet him to say, have you got everything? Where's that mural that you've been working on all week? I wasn't there to then go to Lost Property and chase everything up. I was doing all this from my mobile phone in the south of France. <laughs> then. They couldn't find the tickets that I had put on the sideboard for them. Weeks later, I discovered that somebody that I had in to help me do cleaning, because I was pregnant and everything was getting a bit too much, had slotted them away very tidily with, with packets of photographs that looked identical to this packet of train tickets. So that was a bit of a nightmare as well. So it just confirmed to me that for us and our lifestyle, it's definitely best to wait till the last minute to go on holiday and organise trips. Just because you never know what else life is going to bring along. And getting organised for Christmas, some people have already started doing it. It's October and some people have already done all the Christmas shopping, have all their Christmas cards written. So this is a cultural thing in the UK. I don't know what it's like in the different parts of the world that you are. Obviously you may not celebrate Christmas at all, but we tend to get Christmas cards, although that's kind of going out of fashion a bit. But we have a Christmas card list and we usually write Christmas cards to all our friends and relatives 
that we don't see day to day. Some people do write Christmas cards for people that they see day to day. And then you often put a family newsletter in the Christmas card as well. But also Christmas shopping, presents. We usually get presents for immediate family, very close friends, and maybe small presents for lots of other friends. So for a long time, I felt a bit guilty about the fact that I always leave it till the last minute. And one year I got really organized and I started preparing probably uh, towards the end of November. And what I found was I was just way more stressed out by the time it came to Christmas because I'd had much longer to spend feeling stressed about things I needed to do. Whereas when I leave it till the last minute, I have a finite time in which to do everything. I think there's nothing I can do about it now and I don't get stressed at all. And I just get everything done in a very focused time slot. So everybody's built a different way and everybody ticks a different way, but that's what suits me and I've had to learn that. Another thing I find really bemusing is things like having coffee and dinner with friends. I love doing that spontaneously. To me, it's just really bizarre if you say to somebody, oh, do you fancy getting together for a coffee? And they go, oh yes, I have a window of opportunity three weeks on Wednesday. You know, way to go to make somebody feel wanted <laughs> in your life. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe people who say that to me are people that I'm not a priority to. But I love it when you say to people, oh, should we get together for a coffee? And they go, yeah, what are you doing now? <laughs> that's just fab. And the same with dinner, phone a friend. Are you guys doing anything tonight? Do you want to come around for dinner? And you just have this lovely get together and it's just cool. On the other hand, there's definitely things that I find work much better for me if they're in a plan. I loved it when I taught Keep Fit because there were set times in the week that I had to go out and I had to do a workout because I was the teacher and everybody was expecting me there. So that was great and I was really fit and really toned up because I just had to go because there was no alternative. <laughs> and the same with work. Although I work freelance and that keeps everything really flexible, what really works for me is when a company uh, send me a booking form, give me a purchase order number, they're expecting a particular course um, in a particular place and I have to arrive at a particular time and that's fixed in the diary and I go and do it and there's no alternative and that's it. And I invoice them and I get my money and that's it fixed. And I'm not so good when things are open-ended, like the piano shop that's just over the road. Because they're just over the road, they're sort of well, um, you know what there is to do, so just do it as soon as possible, and I never get around to it. So having specific bookings in the diary is a really good focus for me. And one of the things I find difficult about being at home and working from home and having home things to do is that there isn't a set routine. Um, some people do manage to do that, manage to create a set routine, but nobody's imposing that on me, so that's quite tricky. So, although Darcy's not very good at getting the bus, it's kind of a good routine for me to have to get into the car and drive her to school as a fixed thing in my day. And I find I do get more done if there is a routine about things. So that's why I try to do kind of good time management and set up things that I need to do and when I need to do them by. But I do find it difficult to stick to. Now I think there's a third aspect to this. I think with bigger things, besides having coffee with people and having dinner and that sort of thing, I think when big things come along and they're spontaneous and they're suddenly presented to you, I think you can do them at a moment's notice, but I think it's because you know that they are part of a longer term plan. The bigger plan, the long game stuff that you've thought through. So you know immediately as to whether this spontaneous thing that suddenly popped up fits into that or not. At the beginning of the year, one of the things I talked about in my kind of tips for New Year and New Year's resolutions and that sort of thing was verbalised summary objectives where you have a kind of elevator pitch for all the things that you kind of do. Something that describes exactly um, an area of activity that you have and what you do in that and who you do it with and what you do it for. So for example, my verbalised summary objective of the IT work I do is in my job as an IT consultant, I work with clients on development projects in Microsoft Office, mainly Excel and Access, and I occasionally get training jobs in both of these two. So, if somebody asks me to develop an online database, for example, that's not a very good example because I do want to move towards that, 
Um, what would be a good example? Yeah, floor walking. So somebody asked me if I would do this floor walking job and learn this new software and I just thought, no, I really don't like doing floor walking. Um, so I was able to say, um, no thank you, I don't think that job is suited to me. And it just makes it a lot easier. So yeah, an elevator pitch basically is um, something that you've worked out that you could say during the time it takes to have a ride in an elevator or in the UK we call it a lift, but a lift pitch doesn't quite have the same ring about it, does it? So when an opportunity comes up, when something spontaneous pops up, you can say yes or no, depending on whether it fits into your kind of long-term plan. But it might be part of your long-term view of things that you're going to be open-minded and look for opportunities that you'd never thought about. And that opens up a whole world of new ideas. So I hope you enjoyed this video, please leave your comments below, I do love them. If there's anything in particular that you want me to talk about on my talkie videos for Sundays, then write those in the comments below as well. And I'd love to do another Q&A video soon, so if you've got any questions that you'd like me to answer, pop those in the comments below as well. See you next time, bye!